Hello and welcome to Honors Function. In the last three lectures of this first unit, we will be looking at quadratic expressions. In the first two lectures, we'll be studying quadratic equations, and in the last one, quadratic inequality. Let's start with quadratic equation. So the most general form of a quadratic equation in two variables would be, so we need some x squared, that's one variable. We need some y squared. Now we also should have some x's and some y's, okay? So it would be ax squared plus bx plus cy squared plus dy and then plus e, or we can put the e on this side, it doesn't matter. This is the most general type of quadratic equation. It's what we call um, a conic. It will define a conic geometrically, okay? In this lecture, though, only one of the variable will be quadratic, not the other. So we will not have this term right there. And also, for some reason that I do not know, actually, uh, this would be then the most general type of quadratic equation. But we agree that the standard form would be the one that is already solved for y. I guess it kind of makes sense because this is the only linear term and it's the only y, so we can always solve for it, okay? So this is what we call the standard form of a linear equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? This is a standard form for a linear equation. What do we call a solution? to such an equation. The solution is just a point, an ordered pair uv or a point uv, such that v is equal to au squared plus bu plus c, okay? And finally, the set of all the solutions, okay, the set of all the solution, all the solution, is called the graph of the equation. It's called the graph of the equation. All right. Now, this is just the definition of the standard form, standard form of a solution and of the graph of the equation. Let's go over now a property. So the first result is about the graph of a quadratic equation, okay? And the graph of a quadratic equation is called a parabola, parabola. This is an object that is defined in geometry, a parabola. When the equation is solved for y, there are two types of parabolas. The parabolas that open up, like this one right here, or the parabola that opens down. Here we go. So this is the first result. Second result, there is another way to write a quadratic equation, so this is a standard form, right? There is another way to write the quadratic equation called the vertex form. Vertex form. The vertex form is when you write it as y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Why is it called the vertex form? Because h k is the vertex of the parabola. So what do we call the vertex? The either the lowest point or the highest point. We could say the tip of the parabola, okay? So in vertex form, this would be h and this would be k right here, okay? The point h, k is a vertex. Then we also have the x-intercept of a parabola, okay? The x-intercept of the parabola. So from the standard form, the x-coordinate of the x-intercepts are x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. These are the x-value of the x-intercept, okay? Two values, you have a plus or minus, there are two different uh, values right here, okay? And finally, Let's go over what we call the axis of symmetry right here. So the axis of symmetry is this vertical axis right here. So if you have the vertex form, it's very simple. It's x equals h, right? You can see that right there, x equals h. But if you have the standard form, 
it's x equals negative b over 2a. x equals negative b over 2a. Well, how do you find, uh, from the standard form, if you want to find k and you have x equals negative b over 2a, so this would be h right here, right? h is negative b over 2a. How do you find k? You plug negative b over 2a in this equation right here. So k equals a times negative b over 2a squared plus blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is a bit complicated. You do not need to remember this form in general, all right? How does one go from the standard form to the vertex form? How do you do that? Let's go over it right now. Well, to change this standard form into a vertex form, a vertex form, you have to complete your squared. So I'm going to do it like that in the general case and then um, make sure you can apply it on any particular case. You do not need to remember by heart how to do that, but you need to have seen it once at least in the general case. Okay. So the first step, of course, is to divide everything by a. I can't complete my square unless I have a one as a leading coefficient. So I'm going to divide both sides by a or multiply by one over a. Okay. So one over a times y is equal to x squared plus b over a x plus c over a. And now I'm just going to play with the right side of this equation. Now I'm going to complete my square. So it's x plus half of b over a is b over 2a squared minus the square of this. So b squared over 4a squared plus c over a. Now, I'm going to add these two fractions at the end. I need to multiply both sides by 4a right here, right? So we have equals x plus b over 2a squared minus, now careful, I'm going to put my minus sign in front of the fraction bar. Therefore, I will want a minus here, right? So when it's going to distribute, it's going to turn into a plus right there, okay? So minus what? Minus, uh, I have a b squared and here it's minus 4ac over 4a squared, okay? And finally, you multiply by a to go back to the y equals. So y equals a times x plus b over 2a squared minus b squared minus 4ac over 4a, right here. All right, so this is the vertex form. Therefore, that would be your h with a negative sign in front, right? Because it's you're supposed to have a minus in the vertex form. So h is negative b over 2a, and that would be your k. k would be negative b squared minus 4ac over 4a. But you do not need to remember this result, of course. Let's go over the first example right now. So please, do example number one. I'm going to do number two and number three. This is a particular kind of quadratic equation for which I do not have any linear term, right? There's a quadratic and there's a constant term, but there's no linear term. In this case, we have both a standard form, so y equals negative 5x squared plus 0x plus 3, so it's written in standard form, but it's also a vertex form, negative 5 times x minus 0 squared plus 3, right? So the vertex and the axis of symmetry are pretty simple. The vertex is 0, 3, and the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. That's the y-axis, okay? All right, let me do number 3. Number 3, I need to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. I need to complete my square. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So 1 third of y equals x squared minus 5x plus 4 thirds. Okay, now I'm going to complete my square here on the right. So I have x minus 5 half of x squared minus 25 over 4 plus 4 over 3. So let's put together the last two terms. x minus 5 half squared. This is minus 75 over 12 plus 16 over 12. And so finally, we have x minus 5 half squared. And this is minus 59 over 12. Okay, so now let's solve for y finally. 
So we have y equals 3 times x minus 5 half squared minus 59 over 4. So where's the vertex? 5 half negative 59 over 4. That's my vertex. And the axis of symmetry is x equals 5 half. All right. OK, let's move on. Next, I want to look at a statement from my note that I call a definition. Uh, so let's read it together. I don't always, I don't like to read my notes, but this one I want to read it together. A parabola is concave up when it opens upward. It is concave down when it opens downward. So everyone understand intuitively what it means. This is not a definition. Okay, really. Um, what does the word open means? We need to define open in math, and, and, and it's not, I mean, we, we don't want to define it like that. And then upward, what does that mean? In the positive direction of the y, right? Uh, so I want to stay to this intuitive understanding of concavity. It is possible in algebra, it is possible to have to measure concavity and have a real definition of it. For example, um, we could uh, we could look at two points on the graph right here. We could look at two points on the graph, and we would say that it's concave up if the distance between a point on the line and um, the point on the parabola, the same one right here, right, um, would be either positive or if you so if you do like uh, one minus two, okay, a point on this on this line minus a point on the graph, and right here if you were to do one minus two right here one again is a point on the line right here one okay and two would be right there and here if you were to do one minus two one minus two would be negative so that could be a tool right but it's kind of cumbersome and we don't need this tool uh, and the reason why I don't develop this uh, analytically it's because in calculus you will develop a tool that measure concavity in a very very efficient and elegant way okay so we don't need to look at it from an algebra perspective uh, I just want you to understand the uh, intuitive approach of concavity okay all right and here is a big theorem about concavity the parabola in standard form is concave up if a is positive so the leading coefficient positive it's concave up leading coefficient negative it's concave down now something i didn't tell you is when you write the vertex form right here okay this a this a is the same as this one and so in any case we can read the concavity of the parabola from the a coefficient for example in number seven right here I don't exactly know well actually I know where the parabola is right it's at negative 5 negative 2 so you go at negative 5 negative 2 and from there you know it's going to open downward like that why because it's concave down a is negative 1 all right let's go now over the next statement this definition right here of what we call the discriminant of a parabola it is of a quadratic equation. It's the quantity b squared minus 4c. So here again, when it's given in standard form, okay? b squared minus 4c, actually, I forgot to write right here. I will often use this letter, which is called delta. This letter is called delta right here. And delta will denote my discriminant. Delta is b squared minus 4ac, okay? Um, I'd rather write delta than all these letters right there. So this is a discriminant. And you know where we find that. You find the discriminant when you're looking for the x-intercept of a parabola, right? Uh, again, the formula is negative b plus or minus, and here it's b squared minus 4ac, delta over 2a, right? And if delta is negative, this square root is not real. It's not a real number. Therefore, you don't have any x-intercept, so the parabola would not cut the x-axis. It may be like this or like this, right? If delta is equal to zero, then this is zero, and you're left with only one x-intercept, negative b over 2a, right? So it would be it would touch the x-axis either like this or like this. And if delta is positive, you have two different values and, and you cross the x-axis twice. So actually, let's go over the various cases that we have right here. Um, I'm going to look at delta and I'm going to look at a. 
All right, so in the first case, I want delta to be positive. So if delta is positive, you will have two x intercept, right? The parabola will cut the x axis in two places, and it can do that. All right, here are my axis right there. It can do that either like this, right? Or it can do that being concave down like this, right? And so here I have a positive and here I have a negative. Now, the next case is delta is equal to zero. So if delta is zero and the parabola is concave up, I'm going to touch the x-axis like this in one point only. Here I have two points, right? And if uh, delta is zero and oops, I forgot my zero right here, and A is negative, then the parabola will touch the x-axis like this, and it opens downward. And finally, the last case is when the discriminant is negative, then in this case, the parabola will not have any real root, so it will not touch the x-axis. When um, it opens upwards, when it's concave up, it's going to be somewhere like that. When it's concave down, it's going to be like this, okay? All right, these are all the different cases. Let's go over the last example. So you do number eight and I will do number nine. Determine the position of the parabola with respect to the x-axis. So let's get delta. What is the value of the discriminant? B squared minus four times A times C. So B squared is 16 minus 9 times 4, 36. It's a plus because I have two negative. So it is 52. So delta is positive. My leading coefficient is positive. The parabola is concave up. It will cut the x-axis in two places. Okay? I will have two x-intercept. That's it. Uh, probably not 0, 0. Actually, no, for sure. It's not 0, 0. The y-intercept is negative 3, right? So I could have been a little bit more precise here. Um, my y-intercept is negative 3, so maybe like that, or I don't know, maybe like this. I, I don't know, okay? All right. Thank you for watching.